Freerin, episode 16. It's a flashback. The Sea Adventure Friend. Oh boy. This is gonna be a sad one. Always. He's that friend. Getting a bad feeling. Oh yeah. And I know that that friend, despite his hu not hubris, zeal, had no plan. No idea. Just winging it. Okay, heavy intro. I was talking to a friend today about how having someone to look for, I guess, is a really great starting point for an adventure. One of the things I think a lot about since I watch a lot of shows about adventuring while also traveling quite frequently is how travel itself is not necessarily an adventure. Travel is the most potent for me, maybe it's the RPG influence, when it's not the goal but a byproduct of the goal. Not taking anything away from travel itself, I think some people really love it, there's a lot that could come out of it, but a lot of it is like boarding planes and taking pictures of cafes, seeing monuments, and that's that can be really great, but it doesn't have like the compelling thing about it. And then I was thinking that kind of works as a, a general idea of life, right? Like I'm starting to think that a lot of one's own personal satisfaction comes from the ability to engineer the right adventures or the right goals. Because unlike shows, unlike sane situation, they typically don't show up at our doorstep. They have to be chosen. But like without the ability to do that or, or pick the, the really big grand goals and purpose, whether it be for like a trip or just overall one's life or whatever, without it, a lot of life is kind of just boarding planes, right? Like it's the goal that gives the, the things and the journey a lot of its significance. And speaking from my own personal experience, the adventures that I think of the most fondly all had some greater purpose, something I really desired and dreamed of as well most of the time with some challenge or danger. That has a way of making the route there so much more imbued with significance. It's weird because there's that classic thing of it's not the destination, it's the journey along the way, which I largely agree with, but I think you can sort of flip that a little bit where it's not the journey alone, it's the journey in the shadow of the destination. Sign having what is perhaps the most significant era of his life right now, and he's hunting for a friend, but like he's doing that with this party who will become his friends. Episode 16, long lived friends, but that has multiple meanings. <laughs> So short. Long live friends. Free are just so used to it. This guy's just ready to go. He's just in his battle armor. I guess Aizen's the same, right? He wears his helmet all the time. Is he alive? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Hmm. They're not very ex expressive, the dwarven folk. <laughs> oh, got him. What? The training has begun. This guy does not mess around. My first instinct was right. I don't know if it's true. I've heard that like one of the most dangerous things about street fights or just fighting in general is not the blows, but the potential fall. Underhanded but highly effective. Wait, I actually did get really injured. Damn Stark, like, he can't catch a break. Like, everywhere they go, they're enjoying their leisure. Stark's working. At least they're all working this time instead of stuffing their faces with donuts. Wow, he's really playing that role. He's committed. He's kind of like a statue. But like a deadly statue. I sort of hope we get to see him in action. I bet he's a beast. Sark's gonna get hella strong though. Ah, uh, here we go. Another forest slash village montage. Damn. Another beautiful animal. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> the Stark's training. Another animal life lost. Speaking of bears. You're an uncharacteristically expressive with him. Stark's pretty deadly. He's like super warrior and now etiquette? 
私がヒンメルたちを知る機会をくれたから。Yeah, I was waiting for the backstory here. 妻の愛した村を守っているだけだ。人間だった。わしは遠い昔に交わした約束を果たしているにすぎん。Okay, this actually answers a question that I was, I've been wondering about in this show, but I haven't voiced because it's kind of weird. What is the deal with like cross species relationships? Himmel and Freerun obviously possibly a thing, so I guess that opens the doors there. Demons and humans also theoretically possible, which means there could be half breeds, which is interesting. Human and demon relationships might prove challenging, but then again, I've done it. Fair, I respect that. He's fighting to protect the village and her, her memory, their bond. Something nice and refreshing about that. <laughs> so, so many things like end up being the result of direct conversations on, on the subject. Can't wait. やっぱり覚えるのやめようかな。あ、<笑><笑><笑><笑> When Furin said that, I was thinking that that doesn't apply to me, and that I think different people have different abilities in terms of their visual or auditory recollection. Recently, this thing was trending where you have to close your eyes and try to picture an apple, and there's like a, a, a visual scale of how clear the image is that's kind of a test of your ability to do this. I think it's just a matter of how different people have different、uh, gifts. Like, some people are really good at ideas or concepts and terrible at remembering details, while other people are the opposite or can remember everything they've ever read, etc. Also, this is a A long held curiosity of mine. I think there's a spectrum, though I can't confirm this, of how people think from words to like just like pure stream of thought, if that makes sense. Wordless thought. At the extreme end of one is like people who talk to themselves, using the words as kind of the foundation of the thought. Whereas on the other end, you can have the thought clear as day, but you struggle to articulate it. I'm not very good on the visual spectrum. I can't bring things to mind with like perfect clarity. I'm also, as a lot of you probably know, terrible. Terrible with remembering things like names and facts and dates, small details, but I will never forget a feeling or a concept. Ultimately, I don't think it really matters because all of these are, are tools towards a goal, and that's just navigating, understanding life, and creating context and continuity from which to form your conception of what you want, your goals, the world, what you are, how you interact with it. So, like, they are just different in the way they think, but they're still the same. The image of Himmel isn't what's significant about Freeran's connection to Himmel, and the same is true for this guy. <laughs> ヘワナ時代が訪れるといいな。フォルジ。メビアや、ウォップス。私が未来に連れて行ってあげるからね。うん。それも悪くはないな。人生の最後にお前に会えてよかった。It's hard, man. It's hard to imagine like sitting with a friend for what you think is the last time. I just had the experience with my dog in America who was allegedly terminally ill and had like a month to live and has now been alive for a full year, looking healthier than ever. Thank God. It's a bizarre feeling. There's so much in the show, obviously, of like legacy and how will we be remembered? Will we be forgotten, etc. Carrying on memories. It's a really touching thing to think that people will carry our memories into the future. And I think there's something really important about that that we carry the memory of those we loved with us and people who love us will carry our memories into the future. But then, you know, the thought kind of nags at you, well, It only that only lasts so far, right? To look at it in the most bleak way possible, it's just a matter of time before you're forgotten. And even if your name is remembered, like great kings of the past or what have you, at a certain point, it's not really you anymore. No one really loves you in the way that your, your loved ones loved you when you were alive. But I think there's a follow up to that that it's bittersweet, but there's beauty in it, which is that your legacy is carried forward one way or another, and it doesn't require direct memory. Anything you contribute to the world, both positive and negative, is in the, the book of the world in effect. And consequences. And if you did really great things, you are alive through all of the infinite effects of the goodness that you did. So that there, there is like a non conscious but very real living memory of you and your existence. And this gets a little bit dicey, but there's a way of looking at it.
planet where that even transcends humanity's lifespan because it's the book of existence. What possible positive effects there will be of your life after the end of humanity is hard to imagine and pin down, but if the universe is something like an experiment and if it does have something like, like a will through its rules and laws and stuff, then you are still an essential part of that one way or the other, no matter what happens to humanity. This is just an idea. I have no basis for this at all, but it's possible that even though the, the scale of time and eternity makes us seem less significant, it's also possible that it makes us more significant because anything that's possible becomes almost inevitable given eternity. So the scale of what our lives and our actions mean on a universal stage might actually become greater with increased time and eternity in ways we can't even imagine. A weird way to summarize this is like if there's any chance that our lives have any meaning whatsoever in the universe, the chances of that being realized only go up given eternity. <laughs> See ya! <laughs> it's been real. Maybe that being here was a reminder of... Yeah, you're right. That's what I was going to say. Anyway, peace. Free run episode 16, episode 2. Or episode B? 16B. A milf. Oh yeah, also my friend. The start gets it. Absolutely. Mission number one. It's not the destination, it's the mills you meet along the way. Yeah, there's like a growing parallel between magic and just like technology. I was thinking maybe the priest thing, the priest magic. Oh god. With curses, it's just like bacteria and medicine. A lot, of, a lot of these places probably don't get a lot of visitors. What's his name? Okay, wouldn't have guessed, but sure. Hmm? You ever had this experience where like you're really close to someone and then one day you realize you don't know their last name? <laughs> It's important to know. Important information. Imagine introducing yourself as Gorilla Warrior with a straight face. Right, even though this is like the se second part of this episode, it's all connected. It's all about friends. Oh, so you actually, you know, he's making progress as an adventurer and warrior. Last episode I was talking about like big fish and finding the perfect place and kind of just staying there, deciding, you know, it's just nice enough here that I can forego or just quit entirely my original dream and plan and goal. Unlikely this is the way this goes in the show, but if it were life, there's a possibility that his friend just like made it three villages away and met a girl and just stayed there. Though he probably would have written. Is that her name? At least she knows who she is. I feel like or Yakuza Zero, where you can't take three steps without accidentally launching a side quest. Oh yes, take care of my one tulip. Simple errands. I'm gonna beat some sense her. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. The sign does like older ladies. Likely him, no? Really curious now if it's them or someone before them. An elven. Warrior. Oh! Interesting. All right, it's not that many of them. Odds are pretty good. Given everything I just said about the whole legacy theme of the show and how hard people are trying to hold on and have meaning in their lives and have someone be grateful to them, etc. It's a really interesting idea to have them come across statues of people who are forgotten, like totally forgotten, who probably went through all the same ruminations that they have. Craft was even more of a beast than I first thought. 
いつかは忘れ去られます。ハルトマオサプリティーシャヒンビルソー、クリアなでしょう。In a way that actually feels good? Like he'll deliver this like sad thing, but it, it actually feels uplifting and noble. でもあなたは、ソウルアゴヒゲですね。ハルトマオサプリティーシャヒンビルソー、アゴヒゲ。Like dictating his facial hair choices for life. I saw Tatakaishka Toriegana. Demo Namai no impact of a bachiri that tie branding. Ishoni Zutto Rexini now no cosiona. Interesting, he said that even though Sai didn't leave with him, didn't give up believing. Gorilla no Kisaki Wakota. He looks pretty upset. Okay. Stanga Choko Chubu no Koek Toshida. Koko Kara Haruka Toho. オイサーストとは反対方向だね。You gotta go. We're all going. どうしたもんかね。Oh, that's it? Well, it's obvious. We're all going. Come on. Come on now. The name of the episode is Lifelong Friends or whatever. It was pointed out to me, and I really love this idea that one of the reasons for Sign's resistance to traveling or going on the adventure was that as long as he was in the village and not exploring the whereabouts of his friend, he could sort of safely keep himself in the dark. And assume or pretend that everything was fine with his friend, not poking at the emotional danger there, which he is now poking at. A lot of this is g o i n g to come up, and things are probably g o i n g to get dark at a certain point in his investigation about the whole memory thing. It's such a cliche, it's kind of corny. You know, the whole Lion King thing, he lives in you. The older I get, the more I appreciate that, and more I think that's absolutely right. You are, in a certain sense, a function of people that you remember, and so the people that remember you, in a certain sense, are a function of the people you remember also, etc., etc. It's sort of like it's a memory, it's real, your legacy. Is carried, it just doesn't really have a face or name that you could immediately recollect.